So bone cells, bone cells are very important to know each one of those and what, what is the function of each one of those. Osteogenic, osteoblast, osteocyte, osteoclast. You notice that all of them start with osteo. And osteo is a prefix that means bone. So osteogenic. Genic is coming from generators. Just like the germinative cells. Do you guys remember germinative cells at the basal layer of the epiderms? So when you see gen at the end of any word, it's the generators. The stem cells that are going to generate other cells. This is the grandmother cell. So when you see it automatically, anything that ends with gen or genic, these are the grandmother cells, these are the stem cells. It goes without saying. If you see it anywhere else, same meaning. And this is what's good about Greek and Latin. It's prefixes and suffixes. It doesn't change. Okay? So osteogenic cells, these are uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the grandmother cell and stem cells. The, other, the next one is osteoblast and then osteocyte. Both of them means cell. Understand that it will apply in the, for everything in the future. Okay? Generally speaking, what's blast and what's sight? Both of them means cell. What's the difference? Here is a difference that you need to know. Keep it in your mind. Osteoblast is immature cells that produce something. While osteocytes are mature cells that maintain and modify. Bottom line. Osteoblast, immature this is the one that makes. Osteocyte is the mature, it's the same one. Osteoblast become osteocyte, by the way. Osteoblast become osteocyte. Osteoblast immature, that makes something. And then it, when it become mature, we call it osteocyte. This is going to maintain and modify, two M's. Maintain, modify, maintain, modify. Is that for osteoblast, osteocytes? No, it's for everything. Fibroblast, fibrocyte, chondroblast, chondrocyte, anything. Uh, I'm giving you general rules to apply for everything. So once you see it automatically, osteoblast, it makes, and it is and it is immature. Itself, when it becomes mature, it will be maintaining and modifying. This is like when you are young, you build your house, and then you live in that house, and when you get older, you are going to maintain the house, you change something here, you change something there, you modify, maintain, right? So this is exactly what it is. If you are young, it's the osteoblast, blast. If you are getting older, it's sight, mature. Clast, osteoclast, clast means breakdown. Break down or dissolve. Break down is more. And this has nothing to do with the other three. Uh, irrespective of start with osteo. But this is completely different. The first three, it's the sequence. Osteogenic, these are the generators. It will give you osteoblast, immature that makes the bony matrix. It will maturate and become osteocyte. So it goes like this. Osteogenic, osteoblast, osteocyte. Three, sequence, same cells. But osteoclast is outside of. These are basically white blood cells that are coming to, it's coming from macrophages, which is not even a bone cell. It's from macrophages, it comes to eat, dissolve, break down the bone. So these are the basics about these cells. So here, these cells, where it is located, these are osteogenic cells. And osteogenic cells are the stem cells that's going to make osteoblast. It's located in the endoosteum. Do you guys remember peri ostium? Peri around. Endo means the innermost. Peri around. Endo the innermost. Inside. So osteoblast, uh, I mean osteogenic will make osteoblast. Osteoblast is the one that will secrete and make the bony matrix. And then the osteoblast itself will maturate and become osteocyte that's going to maintain and modify the two amps maintain modify and the last one is doesn't belong here but it is working on the bone so we have to call it osteoclast the bone breakers uh, it's going to dissolve the bone matrix why do you need to at any time 
Why do you need to dissolve the bone matrix? Two reasons. Number one, if you are remodeling, okay? Like uh, a bone that's broken down and you're fixing it and there are extras, you need to remove it, right? Uh, if you are growing, ch ch child is like this, the bone. You want it to be like this. How? You have to dissolve and build, dissolve, build in order to grow. So you need to dissolve anyway. Whether you are growing, whether you have a breakdown or something, you need it. The other thing is, what if you have if you don't have enough calcium in your blood? Remember, we talked about the bone. It's a reservoir. It's storage of calcium, isn't it? So if you run out of calcium, you not run out of calcium. If you don't have enough calcium, these osteoclasts can help you dissolving part of the bone to take the calcium and use it. Okay. So here are the osteogenic cells, and I told you what you need to know. It is stem cells, mesenchymal cells. What's the difference? No difference. Mesenchymal means stem. Mesenchymal, stem. So these are the stem cells, mesenchymal cells, that are going to produce the osteoblast. It also helps in fracture repair. If you have a fracture, it's going to help you by generating other cells to do the repair. Where are these cells located? In the osteum. Look at this cut section here. You see this brown? What is this? What is this brown outside? Golden brown. What do you call it? Peri? Peri osteum. And what is this inside? Endo. So there is endo and peri. Endo and peri around. So it is in the endo osteum. Osteoblasts, again, this is the one that's making, producing the bony matrix. And we call making the bony matrix, we call it osteogenesis. Everything has a meaning that you need to understand. It will make your life easier and easier and easier. Osteogenesis. Osteo means bones. Genesis, generation. So osteogenesis is making the bone, bone generation, which is also called ossification. Osse, osteo, bone, both of them. So what do you make? We make osteoid. Uh, what's oid at the end of any word? Anybody remember? Oid. What does it mean? Uh, similar to. You're very close. Similar to. N not the same. Similar to. Iso means same. But oid means similar to. So osteoid matrix. Uh, do you mean osteus or osteo? No, osteoid. Because it is not bone yet. It is not. It is something similar to the bone. It will ultimately become bone. So that's why we say osteoid, oid, similar to, because only, only when you add calcium, it will become bone. So does the, the osteoblast make the actual bone? No, it make osteoid matrix and it will not become bone until you add calcium to it. So these cells, the osteoblast, when they maturate, these are immature that makes the bony matrix, not the bone, the matrix. And then they are going to maturate and become osteocytes. And osteocytes uh, are not going to divide anymore, but their function is maintain, maturate, uh, and modify, I mean, maintain and modify. So it's helping uh, in, in maintaining, including if something is damaged, it will be maintained. So if you look at this picture right here, this is osteocyte. Guess what? It was here. It was the same one. It was osteoblast before. It was younger, immature. Now, in that spot, and we call that lacuny. Lacuny. Lacuny means spaces. Osteoblast blast in this lacuny. And when they finish working, they maturate and become osteocyte inside this lacuny. So they maturate inside these lacunae that you see here. Osteoclasts are the bone breaker. What do you call bone breaker? The opposite of osteogenesis is osteolysis. Osteogenesis, osteolysis. Genesis and lysis are the opposite. Genesis generating, lysis breaking down. Making, breaking, the opposite. So they are responsible for osteolysis and obviously as i mentioned they come from macrophages the, the eaters it's white blood cells 
but it belong here because this is their function. Uh, these um, uh, osteoclasts, they notice that they are multinucleated. We know what's multi? Many. So multinucleated, they contain many cells. And how are you going to dissolve the bony matrix? You're going to, they, they have enzymes that's going to dissolve the bony matrix that the osteoblast made. Dissolve it. And when you dissolve it, you can get calcium out of it. And we will uh, understand why we ever uh, need to, to get the calcium from there. Uh, the functional unit of the compact bone. How many types of bone do we have? Two types. Compact and? What's the other one? Compact bone. This is the one that's outside. What's the one that's inside? It looks like what? Sponge, yes, yes, spongy bone, compact bone, spongy bone, compact bone outside, strong, tough, spongy bone inside, weak, the one that has the, the, the spaces, it looks like a sponge, spongy bone. So what is the building unit of each one of those or the functional unit? This is something that's basics, important. It's called osteo. Osteone is the functional unit of the compact bone. Uh, spongy bone will be different. Uh, what's the osteone? The osteone consists of central canal, canal at the center, and there are perforated, perforated canals connected to it, and then around it, there will be lamellae, concentric lamellae. This is the structure. Central canal and concentric lamellae. Like what? Like the onion. You know when you cut the onion into two halves and look at it, it's like circle after circle after circle. This is called concentric lamellae. Like lamellae, lamella means uh, layer. So lamella after lamella after lamella, it goes like this, concentric lamellae. E at the end is plural. So concentric lamellae. And I will show you the picture. Here it is. Look at this in the center. This whole thing right here is the osteum. Look at the center. This is the central canal. And look how it's layer after layer after. It looks exactly like you cut an onion, an onion and you see layer after layer, 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 surrounded by layer, surrounded by layer, and so on. We call that together osteum. If you look further and see what's happening inside, you will see here is an osteum. Here is another one. Here is another one. You have a lot of these. In the center, you have the central canal. Within this canal, you have blood vessels to feed the osteum. So why do we have a central canal in the, in the middle? For the blood vessels to run through it. And the blood vessels are going to feed this osteum. Remember, the osteum will contain, this is the functional unit of the bone, right? It's a unit of the bone. Since it's a unit of the bone, it has cells. And these cells need oxygen and nutrients, just like any other cell in our body, right? Do you think there is any cell in our body, whatever it is, will live without oxygen and nutrients? Basics. Oxygen, nutrients. Otherwise, they will not live. So we have to feed them. Uh, that's why we have these blood vessels within the central canal. And then look around it. You will see lamella after lamella after lamella like these. It looks exactly like an onion. You cut it. Um, so, of course, all of this that we're talking about, all of these osteons here, this is the whole thing here is compact bone. Look at the inside. You see these trabeculae? Doesn't it look like a sponge, the inside? It's always like this. The sponge is weak, looks like a sponge, contain cavities, so it's weak inside. Compact is outside of it. It's more protective. And look at these perforating canals. It runs into this, it goes into it. It goes into the central canals. The blood vessels run through it and then go through the canals, central canals. Here is how it looks like. And these lamellae are collagen, which is part of the bony matrix. How about the spongy bone? No, a spongy bone is not, it does not consist of osteoids. It consists of trabeculae. Of course, you'll be asked about this. 
What is the functional unit of combat bone? Ostium. What's ostium? Concentric lamellae with the central canal. In the central canal, you have blood vessels. These are basics. You have to know it. How about the spongy bone? Is it ostium? No, it's not ostium. What's the functional unit? Trabeculae. Basics. Now, inside of this, I have compact bone outside. I have spongy bone inside. How about the inside itself? Like within the spongy bone or in that canal or cavity, the, the marrow cavity, the bone marrow cavity, bone marrow, right? The cavity contain bone marrow. The, it's called the bone marrow cavity. The bone marrow, when we are born and we are still children, the bone marrow everywhere is producing cells. Bone marrow producing cells, we call it red bone marrow because red blood cells are the main thing. Red bone marrow. So uh, children have what? They have red bone marrow. Where? In the bone marrow cavity and within the spongy bone. How about after we grow? What's going to happen? As you grow, you're going to store fats in this red bone marrow. All of it? No. No. Only the bone marrow in the bone marrow cavity. Did you ever see the, one of these long bones and you open it, look from inside? Did you ever see it from inside? If you look at it from inside, you will see that uh, bone marrow cavity containing the bone marrow and this one only, just this one in the, in the cavity, not in the spongy bone. This one in the cavity, we start to store fat in it, okay? For extra fat, so it will help us later. So it will be replaced by fat. And fat, naturally, the color is yellow. So it will change and become yellow bone marrow. Does the yellow bone marrow produce cells? No, it will be taken over. So we call it the yellow bone marrow. What's the function then? Storing fat. Uh, you can use that fat later. So how, how us, adults, how, how do we reproduce our cells? The other, the other parts, the rest of it, in the, in the spongy bone. That's not going to be replaced. So if you're a child, you're using all the bone marrow in the bone marrow cavity, in the spongy bone. Later, the ones in the bone marrow cavity will be taken over by the fat. It will become yellow bone marrow, storing energy, storing fat. The other, one, the other bone marrow within the spongy bone will stay as it is. And this is where we get uh, our cells. These are the trapeculae, the building unit of the spongy bone. Look, you're looking inside. Can you guys see this? Look at this. What do you think this bone is? What is this? Compact, right? Look inside. This is spongy. And look inside more. This is a cavity. Is that clear? Compact, spongy, and then you have a cavity. How about the ants? No, the ants, we don't have cavities. Compact from outside, still like this. But the inside, look how spongy it is contain these cavities. So the bone marrow here is not going to be replaced. It will continue to produce our cells. Um, how the weight is, be, is transmitted, I talked about that in the lab. It goes like from the skull to the vertebral column, all the way to the sacrum, from the sacrum to the pelvis, from the pelvic bone acetabulum, it's transmitted to the heads of the femur, and then it goes down to the tibia and all the way to the foot, if you guys still remember that. This is like this. From the pelvic bone to the head, going down the shaft until the end. After that, it goes to the tibia. At the end of the tibia, which bone that the tibia articulate with? Yes, you're very close. Talus. Yes, the talus bone, specifically. Periosteum is the surrounding, and I talked about this before. It's the surrounding of the bone, and peri is surrounding. Epi is different. Do you guys know the difference? Peri and epi, they are very close, but there is a difference. Peri is just surrounding. Epi is the outermost. So you can have peri surrounding, and outside of it, you still have epi. It's not the same. Surrounding is not the same as outermost, right? The periosteum is basically 
this is where we do the attachments. Like if you ask, where is this muscle? Uh, the tendon here, where does it attach? It blends with the periosteum. So it is tough. And that's why it's compact bone. So this periosteum surrounding the bone, obviously isolating the bone, protecting the bone, being a tough uh, layer, also provide a route or the entrance of the blood vessels, how the blood vessels get into the bone through the periosteum. It also helps in uh, the bone growth and repair through what? The periosteum, I mentioned it yesterday, the periosteum is two layers itself, right? Inner and outer. What's the inner? Which one is cellular and which one is fibrous? Anybody remember? The periosteum is two layers, cellular and fibrous. Which is one, which is which? The inner is what? Cellular or fibrous? Cellular. Cellular. The cells are inside. Fibrous, the fibers are outside because the fibers are poor protection. Look at this right here. This is the bone itself. And this is the periosteum. The periosteum is two layers. This is the fibrous. And inside of it, you have the cellular. The cellular is obviously the one that contains the cells. And the ostium is the inside. And basically, it's osteogenic cells, which is osteoblasts. This is what's located in the inner ostium. This is the innermost layer. It is tropically. Okay? So if you look at it here, here is the endostium. Tropically, as you see here, it is spongy bone inside. It's tropically. And this is where the osteogenic cells, meaning osteoblast, um, that will give osteoblast, I mean. This is the location of osteogenic cells giving osteoblast. Uh, now, osteogenesis, which is ossification, is bone formation. Is that making bone bone? No. It's just making osteoid matrix. Then it will be followed by calcification. When you calcify, something means you add calcium to it. Calcium is what make anything strong. Okay? So it's two steps. You start ossification, osteogenesis, you make the matrix, and then uh, calcify it to become strong. Uh, there are two ways to make the bone. One of them is embryology again. Not much. The bones that you see it right now in the fetus, in embryo, it was not bone at all. In the very beginning, it was not bone. It was either cartilage or membrane. And then you change it into bone. Cartilage or membrane. And that's why we, we say endochondral. And by the way, chondro is cartilage. Osteo or ossi is bone. Chondro, osteo or ossi. Prefixes, prefixes. Collected. The more you get, the better and easier it gets. Endochondral. Chondral means cartilage or intramembranous. It was a membrane. It was a cartilage. And uh, we are, and, and then it's going to change during fetal time. It will become bone ultimately in those two ways. Um, how long are our bones going to continue to grow? Average 25. When you reach 25, not exactly, but around, you are not going to grow any uh, taller. So the first one is endochondrial ossification. Uh, and this is the vast majority of the bones. You start with something called primary ossification center. Primary ossification center. The center that starts the ossification, which is changing something into bone. Changing what? Cartilage. What type of cartilage? There are different types of cartilage. This is hyaline cartilage, to be specific hyaline cartilage. So the cartilage will basically become bone. Here it is. This is cartilage, hyaline cartilage. And then inside of this, you're going to start, uh, the chondrocytes are going to change the center first to empty it. And then blood vessels will start to invade 
so that other cells come over to this area. It's invading in, in different spots, and we will talk about it. And it will leave alone the site, the the uh, uh, the ends of the bone, the epaphysis, and both sides. It will leave it. The aphysis, it will be invaded. Then you're going to start to make a cavity inside this central part only. I'm not talking about the the, the ends. I'm talking about the newly forming shaft, this, the center. So you're going to start making a cavity in which you, you make the primary ossification center. And this primary ossification center will make the spongy bone inside. At the same time, it will make compact bone outside. The cavity will become larger and larger and larger. You start with very tiny cavity, you empty it, and then you enlarge it, enlarge it, enlarge it. So the cavity is getting better, and now there will be a transitional, a transitional part between the ends of the bone, known as epaphysis, and the, 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 the shaft, which is called metaphysis, is forming. Okay, and then look at this. The whole shaft become bone. And then what? The epiphysis itself will start to make secondary ossification center. So where is the primary ossification center? In the shaft, diaphysis. And this is the one that's going to change the shaft into bone. How about the ends? This is another ossification center. We call it secondary ossification centers. Blood vessels go to that area as well. You're starting the same process. Uh, the osteoblasts are going to migrate to this part, making a cavity and changing the cartilage into bone. Same thing. Okay. This cavity here, instead of being empty, it will be replaced by the spongy bone. Um, there is something that's important here. Look at this. This is spongy bone. Right here, this spongy bone is not a cavity. Are we following? The epiphysis inside of it, it's not a cavity. It's spongy bone. The diaphysis, the shaft, inside of it, there is cavity. There is a difference here, right? So then what? You are going to leave this area in between. You see this white uh, rectangle here? It's referring to this, that you're going to leave it alone. And this is called epiphyseal cartilage. Uh, we are not going to change this one. You're changing the epiphysis. You're changing the diaphysis. Both of them will become bone. And this area in between, leave it alone. It will stay as cartilage. And we will call it epiphyseal cartilage. Very important. Because this is the center in which the bones will grow longer and longer and longer until you reach the age of uh, 25 approximately. It's an average. Hmm? Yes. The growth plates, epiphyseal cartilage, growth plates, and this is where it's formed. At the end, everything will be bone except for this one, the epiphyseal cartilage, and this epiphyseal cartilage, again, is the one, is, is the point from which the bone grow longer and longer and longer and longer forever. No, not forever. An average of 25. Does it have to be? No. Maybe 23, 24, 26. Average, 25. Then what's going to happen? You're not going to grow taller than that, right? We know that the bones will stop at certain point. And it's never grow more than that, which is average 25. What exactly is changing? The epiphyseal cartilage, which is the growth plate that was cartilage, it will be ossified itself. It will become bone. That's it. When it is bone, it's not going to grow anymore. As long as it is cartilage, it will continue to produce and make the bone taller and taller, longer and longer. At certain point, when you're done, with the help of the hormones, this cartilage, which is the epiphyseal plate, also known as the growth plate, will change and become bone. And it will leave a line. This line is called epiphyseal line. So how do we know that this person, he's 24 years old, 25 years old, and he's coming to us, uh, am, I, am I still growing or that's it? X-ray, if I see line, no, you're not. 
you have the epiphyseal line, it's over. If I see cartilage, you're still growing. How to know from x-ray? It's very simple. The cartilage is darker colored. If I see something darker, you have the cartilage still. The bone is white. So it's epiphyseal cartilage become an epiphyseal plate. And these are the steps. Uh, and here is one more thing that I want you to know. Right here, you see this? You see the blue cover here? They always, these are rules in, in the pictures. They always make the, the fat yellow lobules. And they always make the cartilage blue, light blue like this. So when you see it, you know that we're talking about cartilage. Okay? So there will be a cartilage covering the, 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 uh, the head. You see this cartilage? This is called the articular cartilage. Did we see it? Like this is the head, it's bone, everything is bone, except for this cartilage that's going to stay, hopefully, forever, as long as you're alive, okay? This cartilage, the epiphyseal plate, will become bone, ultimately, right? This one covering here is not. It should stay as cartilage. And if you lose it, this is osteoarthritis, or degenerative joint disease, if you heard about this, because if this is the end of the bone and this is the end of the other bone, you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, afford it or you cannot take the friction between the bones. It's horrible. To the extent of if that happened, they do like replacement of the joint. You cannot have bone with bone. Extremely severe pain. So if you have a cartilage covering this and a cartilage covering this and there's fluid in between cartilage with cartilage, it's okay. That's normal. Okay, wear and tear later on, the cartilage start to be eroded a little bit. So it will be, it will not be as smooth as it used to be. It will become a little bit rough. So that will give you like a little bit of friction, just a little bit of friction. And this is the beginning of the, of the osteoarthritis, which is not a very uh, good term. They, sh they change it into degenerative joint disease, but still used. Okay, and it's wear and tear. This cartilage start to be eroded if it comes to the point that it's not just eroded, if it is gone, replacement. If you hear about knee replacement, hey, he's having osteoarthritis for the past 15 years or something, and now he's replacing his knee, for example. Uh, what happened? Is uh, like the knee is destroyed? No, it's not destroyed. Just the cartilage is gone. You cannot take it. It's horrible pain. So here are the secondary ossification centers. Epiphyseal closure, the epiphyseal plates change and become um, uh, epiphyseal line. Look at this. Do you see this black right here? You see black? Black is cartilage. Look at the white. This is bone. As long as I see this, well, look at the, all of these black lines. Once I see the black lines, it is cartilage. If this is a growth plate still working. Now look at this. You don't see any black lines, but look, you will see instead a very tiny white. Of course, you're not responsible for x-ray. I'm just explaining how it looks like. So a position of growth, on the other hand, is when you grow wider. And this basically needs osteoclast with osteoplast. You erode from the inside, with the osteoclast and you build from outside so the circumferential lamellae are added from outside and eroded from inside uh, until you enlarge the, the medullary cavity which is the marrow cavity there is no difference medullary cavity marrow cavity until it become uh, the needed uh, diameter uh, the other side is basically it used to be a membrane and you change the membrane into bone. We call that intramembranous. Specifically, the membrane was similar to the dermis. Do you remember the dermis and epidermis? This is how it used to be. It looks like the dermis. So we also call it dermal ossification. And the bones that come from this are specifically mandible and clavicle. Okay? Most of the other bones uh, basically all the long bones will come from endochondral which is the vast majority few bones 
used to be a membrane, specifically the jaw, the mandible, and the clavicle. Those two used to be a membrane, okay, not cartilage. So you need to remember those examples as examples for dermal. How about the examples for uh, endochondral? It's, it's almost everything else, any long bone in your body. So here, uh, mesenchymal cells, which are the osteogenic cells, uh, they come into that membrane and they start the ossification process by the osteoblasts that will be trapped inside pockets. Pockets like these, trapping them inside. Blood vessels are going to invade into the, the membrane, start depositing the bone, the bony matrix, then it will be calcified until you get uh, the membranous bone. Okay, um, I'm not I'm not going in deeper than that. This is good enough. Okay, what I told you already is enough. You don't have to go deeper than that. Uh, the blood vessels that get into the bone that I was talking about, the blood vessels that are going to bring the cells in in order to change it, and then after it is bone, you still need to feed the bone, right? You still give to, you need to give oxygen and nutrients to the bone. So there will be um, some blood vessels and these blood vessels can be done from this picture. That's easier. In the center, in the center of the diaphysis, the, the, the blood vessels here are called nutrient vessels or nutrient artery and vein. And then at the metaphysis, metaphyseal artery and vein. And then at the epaphysis, epiphyseal artery and vein. And this is what we need to know nutrient artery in the middle of the diaphysis and then there are metaphyseal and epiphyseal blood vessels uh, within the periosteum just like any other tissue we will have lymphatic vessels and nerves uh, and by the way the periosteum is extremely sensitive it contains a lot of nerves um, and then bone remodeling uh, the balance, we should have balance between uh, the osteoclast, osteoblast, and osteocytes. These three cells, there should be a balance. But if you're going to modify for whatever reason, uh, you're going to give an upper hand to one of them temporarily and then the other one. What do you mean by remodeling? Remodeling, if you're growing, you're remodeling, right? This bone become this bone. Isn't it remodeling? Changing? How about if you have an injury or something or the bone is broken and then you are rebuilding or uh, fixing the bone? You need remodeling. How about other things? Like, do you know that if you, uh, if you are exercising on a regular basis, do you know that your bone is going to not taller? That's impossible. Once the epiphyseal cartilage becomes epiphyseal line, it's over. But your bone can, can do the ap uh, apophyseal or uh, the, it become wider and thicker and stronger. Do we know that? It's not just the muscles. If you're exercising, the bone will become stronger, thicker, not taller, not longer. It will become thicker, right? This is another remodeling. You're building. So you are balancing between these cells depending on the situation. Here is another situation. The opposite of exercise. What if you, if you are lazy and laying down uh, on the bed all the time, what do you think will happen? Wh which ones will take over, will take the upper hand? Is it the osteoblast, the, the former, the, the, the forming bones, or the osteoclast? Osteoclast will take the upper hand because the bone, you, your body doesn't, doesn't like think on its own. It's all about the situation. When you exercise, your bone will assume that you wanted your bone to become stronger and it will make it stronger. If you're lazy and not doing any effort, your bone will assume that you don't need strong bone. So why don't we take the resources and use it somewhere else? This is how, uh, how it works. I have a question? OK. 
can produce what? Uh, no, that's that's not normal. The, the cartilage, unfortunately, is something that stay or deteriorate. It's not something that increased. There are some conditions. If you give some medications, it can be a little bit thicker, but that's not normal. The bone, that's not that's normal. Okay, so um, we have two things that are opposite here, opposite scenarios. You exercise, bone grow more. Again, not taller, not longer. It becomes thicker and stronger. If you are lazy and you're not, uh, uh, not, not even exercising, if you're not doing the daily activities, your bone will become weaker. Why? Because the bone works like this. You exercise, I'm assuming that you need the bone, I will make it stronger. Regular activities, I'm assuming that you need the bone as it is. You're not doing activity, I'm assuming that you don't need the bone. I will take the resources somewhere else and it will become weak. And that's why you always hear that anybody who is like uh, having a surgery or something, they, they tell them, uh, you need to move around. Uh, but, but this is kind of hard to me. Do anything. Just move in the room, right? Just sit down and, and um, uh, stand up and sit down, right? You hear about this. You have to do some activities to tell the bone, uh, I still need the bone. Don't deteriorate. It can take a couple of months and like half of the bone can be gone. And it will break down very easily. Okay? So it's all depend on the situation. The cells, normally, normally, if you're just doing the regular daily activities, it's balanced. The, 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 osteos, the osteoblast will not take the upper hand. The osteoclast will not take the, the, the upper hand. Both of them are kind of equal. I'm building and removing equally. So the bones stay as it is. Osteoblast take over, take the upper hands if you're exercising, more than normal. Osteoclast will take the upper hands if you're doing less than normal. Clear? This is exactly what's happening. So with exercise, the bone is going to uh, grow and become stronger. And the opposite is what I was just saying, that in few weeks, you can lose thirds of your bone, believe it or not. If somebody's like laying in bed for a couple of months, third of the bone is gone. And of course, it will become very easy to break down. And that's why everybody, no matter what's happening, there should be some sort of a movement to give the bone the message that we need the bone. Don't break it down. Don't degenerate the bone. Okay, so all of this is in the bone itself. How about external factors from outside of the bone? In order for the bone, in order for you to make the bone, and in order for the bone to stay healthy, strong, we need certain things, including calcium and phosphorus. We get that from the diet, okay? These are minerals that are needed. I just mentioned that we do not make bone by the osteoblast just like this. It doesn't make bone. It makes osteoid matrix. It makes the matrix itself, right? which is basically the matrix is basically connective tissue and some fibers in it. Matrix, fibers, that's it. And then when you add the calcium, it will become bone. So you have to have enough calcium and phosphorus. And phosphorus is follower of calcium. You absorb calcium, you absorb phosphorus. You don't absorb calcium, you don't absorb phosphorus, like the shadow. It, it goes without saying like this. Calcium, ph phosphorus follow calcium. Both of them are needed because of the calcium phosphate. Remember this? The calcium phosphate. This is the major component. So you do have to have both of them in good amounts, plus other things in a smaller amount, magnesium, fluoride, iron, and, uh, and manganese. Magnesium, manganese, fluoride, and iron. Small amount. Uh, calcitriol and vitamin D3. What's calcitriol? Does anybody remember calcitriol versus cholecalciferol? What's the difference? Both of them are vitamin D. What's the difference? Yes, cholecalciferol is the inactive primary form that will make it in the skin. Calcitriol is the active form activated where? In the kidney. It go to the liver first and then the kidney. When it's active, this is what's going to help absorption of both. 
you do have to have enough vitamin D besides uh, beside the, uh, uh, the calcium and phosphorus and other minerals. What else do we need? So we need minerals, calcium, phosphorus, this is the major one, plus minor amounts of the other um, uh, trace elements like magnesium, manganese, fluoride, and iron, okay? And then vitamin D, active vitamin D. That vitamin D itself will not do the work if it's inactive. We have to activate it first. What else? Vitamin C for collagen. Collagen is part of the matrix. The matrix is collagen, and, um, col which is the fibers. Matrix containing fibers. What are the fibers? Collagen. In order to have the collagen, you need to, to, to have vitamin C. And remember, C is the first letter of collagen. Okay? If you don't have vitamin C, you don't have collagen, which is a basic component of the bony matrix. It's fibers and matrix. Ma I mean, osteoid material matrix containing fibers. What are the fibers? Collagen fibers. You have to have vitamin C. Okay? Vitamin A for osteoblast activities. K and 12 for the protein parts, okay? So we have to have these vitamins. Uh, I know that you never heard of anybody having an issue with the bone except if he's not having calcium or vitamin D. This is what we all know, right? It's calcium or vitamin D. If I ask you, somebody's having weak bone, calcium and vitamin D. This is what we all know, right? But the other ones, even though it's it play a minor role, less, but it is still important. And there are some people who can have an issue with their bones because of one of these uh, vitamins, C, A, K, and B12. Um, what else? Hormones, growth hormone, and thyroxine, and sex hormones, and parathyroids. You have, bar you have four hormones that you do need to know their effect. If you don't have it, you don't have enough, your bone will become weak, just like this. Okay, so growth hormone, the name gave it away. Growth hormone, what do you think the function? Growth, it's, it's called growth hormone, the hormone of growth. Stimulate the bone to grow, you have to have it. And that explain during puberty or around puberty, don't you see a, a sudden like stunt or a, or a sudden growth of uh, the, the kids become like uh, their body grow fast? Growth hormone. And the other thing is, um, around that time, estrogen and testosterone, they also surge during the during puberty. And that explained, during that time, you see that like little kids, and then all of a sudden, they grow, and they, especially uh, uh, girls grow faster than, than boys, okay? So it's estrogen and testosterone because they stimulate osteoblast. You do need to remember that. What is the effect of the hormones? The, the sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone, estrogen in females, testosterone obviously in males, they stimulate osteoblast. And what's the osteoblast? Bone form, uh, the bone uh, former uh, or the bone breaker. Does it make the bone? Does it break the bone? Osteoblast. Is it the immature or the mature? Immature. Does the mature make bone? No, it's maintain and modify, right? So at this sudden uh, increase in, uh, uh, in, in the growth of the bone, it's just because of the testosterone and, and estrogen. So testosterone and estrogen stimulate osteoblast? Yes. Making the bone grow faster? Yes. How about this? What do you think will happen in, mon in menopause? What happened in menopause? Uh, the estrogen, what happened to the estrogen? It goes down, it goes up, stay the same. It goes down. It, it will never be like zero. That never happened. It goes down. So you're not stimulating the osteoblast as you used to, right? So the bone will become weaker. Did we hear about osteoporosis? that come after menopause, this is the reason. Once you have, as long as you have enough estrogen as a lady, as a female, 
uh, and you have to start enough testosterone as a male your bone will stay strong because stimulate 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 stimulating the osteoblast once it goes down osteoblast activities goes down so guess what who is going to take the upper hand now osteoclast right they are like this what's keeping them like this osteoclast doesn't change it, 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 it's not affected by anything but osteoblast is affected what keep it like this a lot of things including estrogen and and testosterone right once estrogen and testosterone goes down their activity goes down osteoclast didn't go down so who take the upper hand osteoclast it's going to erode the bone make the bone looks like porous hence the name osteoporosis did you get this idea when you hear osteoporosis osteo is bone porosis porous the porous bone why because the drop of activity of the osteoblast as opposed to the staying activity or uh, constant activity of the osteoblast okay um parathyroid hormone and calcitonin these are very very important hormones to maintain calcium homeostasis and let me say it this way calcium in your blood is life or death you have to have calcium enough calcium in your blood okay a bit more important than the bone if you don't have enough calcium in the bone the bone become weaker right if you don't have calcium in your blood you can die so blood calcium is more important why because calcium in the blood it goes to different things to keep them working what are the different things aside from the bone I'm not talking about the bone now muscles will never contract without calcium so your muscles will not contract and guess what what if you don't have enough calcium to the extent of your heart is not working you can die right uh, electrical activities need calcium nerve function calcium blood clot calcium so what do you think which one is more important Cal blood calcium or bone calcium blood calcium because the blood goes everywhere including the nervous system the nervous system will not work without it the muscles the muscles can stop working without calcium right blood clots believe it or not people can stay bleeding 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 without stopping because of the calcium so the primary target is to keep calcium homeostasis which is the calcium in the blood so what who is responsible for keeping calcium level within the normal range which is homeostasis two hormones opposing each other parathyroid hormone and calcitonin parathyroid always trying to increase calcium level calcitonin and do not listen do not confuse calcitonin with calcitriol both of them start with calcium and sometimes they see confusion it have nothing to do with each other it's just because you work on calcium but calcitonin calcitonin is a hormone that decreases calcium in the blood calcitriol is vitamin d okay they are doing the opposite function anyways i have two hormones oh, uh, parathyroid hormone always trying to increase calcium level in the blood calcitonin is the opposite okay so what's the end result keeping calcium level constant right almost 9 to 11 let's say or 8 to 11 so if it goes up calcitonin take the upper hand bring it down if it goes down parathyroid hormone take the upper hand and bring it up so you keep calcium homeostasis even on the expense of the bone if the calcium level goes goes down you can take the calcium from the bone okay so this is for parathyroid uh, and calcitonin and here is the calcium homeostasis that i just talked about you have to maintain enough amount of calcium in the blood more important uh, than the bone here is the structure of the bone organic compound is ma is mainly collagen uh, calcium this is the big portion phosphate is the second one from uh, uh the the um the the elements and then you have these trace elements but what's the main bulk collagen calcium phosphorus collagen calcium phosphorus these are the main parts 
So this is what I was just talking about. And let me make it simple like this. You have calcium in your blood. Okay. Where did you get that calcium? What's the input? Food. Right? You eat. You absorb. Calcium go to the blood. This is the input. Clear? This is the input. And who's helping us to do that? Absorption. What's helping calcium absorption? Vitamin D. Vitamin D. Help calcium absorption. Clear? This is the input. Adding calcium to the blood. Okay? What's the second source? Bone. But bone goes both ways. We can take calcium from bone to the blood, or we can take calcium from the blood to the bone. Clear? So one input and one input or output. And the third one is output, urine. We can get rid of the extra calcium in the urine. So here it is. What's the source of calcium in absorption from the digestive system? Out, kidney, urine. How about the bone? In or out, depending on the situation. Is this part clear? Okay. So what's happening here is, we are going to control the amount of calcium by the balance between parathyroid and calcitonin. Parathyroid hormone increase. Let me ask you this question, even if you don't know. If you are parathyroid hormone, what's your goal? To increase calcium in the blood or to decrease it? Increase it. I give you the three sources and tell me what you're going to do. Are you going to increase absorption or decrease it? Increase it, right? Do you agree? Increase it. So what are you going to do with the bone? Do you take the calcium from the bone to the blood or from the, blo the blood to the bone? What's your, what's, your, what's your goal? To increase calcium level in the blood. You are parathyroid hormone. What are you going to do with the bone? Move the calcium from, from the bone through activating what? What should you activate if you wanted to take the calcium from the bone? Which cells? See if you're following with me. Now, which bone cells do you activate to be able to take the calcium from the bone? Osteoclast. Yes, osteoclast. You have to, to activate osteoclast. How can you take the calcium from the bone if the bone is not dissolved? Right? Osteoclast. Okay. So, what do you do again with the bone? You take the, the calcium from the bone to the blood. You have two sources so far? Okay, what are you going to do with the kidney? What do you tell the kidney? Get rid of calcium in the urine or keep it? Keep it. This is exactly the function of vitamin D. One thing only, the first one, which is taking the calcium, absorbing the calcium is not directly. It's through vitamin D. So, parathyroid hormone will tell vitamin D, absorb more for me. Not directly. It doesn't go to the digestive system and increase absorption. No, it tells vitamin D, increase calcium absorption. So now I'm working on the three sources. At the end, I'm increasing calcium level. Is this part clear for the parathyroid hormone? The opposite is calcitonin. So if you are calcitonin, what's your goal? Increase or decrease calcium level? Decrease it. What are you going to do with the bone? Do you, do you transfer calcium from bone to blood or blood to bone? Blood to bone, right? What's your goal? Decrease calcium in the blood. How? I take calcium from the blood to the bone. Clear? By activating which cells? Bone cells. Osteoblasts. The bone builders. The bone builders, when they start to work, they will find calcium from the blood, take it, and put it in the bone. Is that clear? Okay, what are you going to do with the kidney? Tell the kidney to do what? Get rid of calcium in the urine or keep it? Get rid of it. This is the, fu the function of calcitonin. Is that clear? This is what we need to know. These are the sources, yes. And the third one, you're getting rid of it or not? It's out. But you can, it, you can tell it more, get rid of more, 
or keep it, right? It's out source, but you can, you can control it as well. So you're playing in three different spots. Digestive system, absorb more or less, bone, take or give, urine, excrete or keep. Clear? Is that clear? Exactly. Through vitamin D. So they don't work directly on the, on the digestive system. Absolutely. Only vitamin D. Actually active vitamin D. What is it called? What's active vitamin D? Cal calcitriol. Not, not calcitonin. Okay. What's a calcitonin? It's a hormone that decreases calcium. It's a hormone, right? This is a vitamin. This is a hormone. They have nothing to do with each other. This is a hormone. This is a vitamin. Vitamin D is vitamin. Increase absorption in the digestive system. That's it. Calcitriol. Calcitonin is a hormone that decreases calcium. Uh, where do we secrete these hormones? Parathyroid hormone, obviously, from the parathyroid gland. Do you know where is your thyroid gland? Right here. This is the thyroid gland. Behind it, we have two pairs of parathyroid glands secreting parathyroid. This is the source. How about uh, calcitonin? Where do you get it from? From the thyroid gland. And of course, you'll say, uh, isn't thyroid gland make thyroid hormone? Yes, beside that. Thyroid gland, mainly it makes thyroid hormone. Plus, there are C cells. The C is the first letter of calcitonin. So it also makes calcitonin. Okay? And here is what I talked about. Here are the three sources. The digestive system, the bone, the kidney. Uh, increasing and decreasing. And I explained it. Okay? Fractures. The bone can be fractured in different ways. Um, I want you to know the basics. The basics are... If you have a fracture, you can have a fracture of the bone while the skin is intact. Of course, it can happen, right? If you hit something with, even without affecting the skin, without injuring the skin, the bone inside can be broken, right? This is called closed or simple fracture. If the skin is affected, we call it compound. This is number one. Different types of fracture. It can be transverse fracture. Just understand the meaning. Look at this. This is a bone. When you break it down like this, like you're cutting a cucumber like this, this is called transverse. You're cutting transversely. Okay? Displaced fracture. Here is a bone. Are we following? You break it down. Is it like this? No, this is transverse. Displaced means it's not aligned anymore. And you know what we do in this case? You have to do traction surgery. We have to pull it out like this, realign, and then cast to heal. Um, when I when I when I was working in an emergency, we used to it's not used anymore, but we used to use something um, like our, uh, something to wrap it around the bones. And there, there was like uh, pieces of metal to track. It was really bad. But they, I, they are not using that anymore. They have other tools. But um, orthopedic surgeons is, is like, um, their, their, their job is, is not like uh, traditional medicine. It's like breaking and cutting and fixing and putting screws and stuff like that. But um, this is what, what you, we used to do at, at that time. Traction, it's called traction. You have to pull it away and put weight on both sides to, to pull it out and then realign, put it together, x-ray, aligned, okay, cast, keep it. This is displaced fracture, okay? Next is called spiral fracture. Spiral fracture, what do you think will happen if somebody twisted your, your upper limb like this? To the extent of this bone is uh, broken, spiral. Like, what if I get, like, one of these cucumbers and, like, twisted like this? What do you think the fracture will look like? Is it transverse? No, it's spiral shaped, right? Compression fracture is basically if you're jumping and you know how the weight goes, right? Skull, vertebral column, 
pelvis, femur, tibia, and then the foot, right? So if you're falling down like from the second floor or something, and you're falling down like straight like this, the, the vertebrae from that weight and from the, the head to the ground, they are going to be compressed. And we call that compression fracture, okay? What, what do you think if, if you have to like fall down like this? If, if you have to jump from the second floor, third floor, no, not the third floor, that's too much. <laughs> Let's say second floor. How, how do you jump? Do you jump like straight like this? Like this, flat. How do you do it? Yeah, you, you have to use your joints. You have to use your joints. So once you touch the ground, Bend all the joints. Uh, does that mean there is no injury? Less injury. This is the, 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 the lowest injury. You have to jump just like once you hit the ground, bend all the joints. When you bend all the joints, the, 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 the shock would be distributed to the, so that none of the bone will take all the shock and break down. So this will be the best bet. If you fall like this, compression fracture. If you fall like this, you're breaking down several bones. That's even worse. This is the worst ever if you fall like this, flat. Straight compression fracture. The only, th the only way is just bend as much as possible of your joints. Bend the knee, bend the hip like this. That will absorb a lot of shock. And this is to minimize the damage. It doesn't mean you're not uh, going to have any damage. Anyways, uh, the next uh, fracture is Potts fracture. And uh, this is a transverse fracture. This is a displaced fracture. This is compression fracture. This is spiral fracture, looks like spiral. Uh, this is epiphyseal, I will come to the other one. Epiphyseal fracture, what do you think? Where does it happen from the name? Ep epiphyseal plate, epiphyseal plate. Do you remember when we talked about the endochondral ossification, do you remember this? This is the epiphysis, which is bone. This is the diaphysis, which is bone. And in between, it's cartilage, right? Epiphyseal cartilage, growth plate. So it's cartilage. Isn't the cartilage weaker than the bone? It can happen. And this is like the worst ever. This is a nightmare for, for, for kids. Because if you have a child or, or a teenager or something, or 12, 15, whatever, and you injured specifically the epiphyseal plate, this one leg will stop growing and the other one will continue, right? So those poor kids are going to be limping because one is long and one is short. So any other fracture can be fixed somehow and we can work on it, but this one is like really bad, okay? Uh, community fracture, uh, so this is for transverse. Displaced, compression fracture, spiral fracture, epiphyseal, and then commuted fracture. Commuted fracture means it's not one bone and it becomes two. No, this is, can be transverse, spiral, anything else. But if you end up having many pieces, we call it commuted fracture. Yeah, exactly, like shattered bone, okay? And this, this is a really hard surgery because it's not only putting the bone, they have to put all these pieces somehow if they can. So community, I just want you to understand what does it mean generally speaking, okay? Green stick fracture, what's the green stick in the first place? If you have a tree and you have one of these sticks, it's a green stick, right? If, if you have a, a stick like a, a dry one and you hold it like this, once you do like this, you break it down into two pieces, right? It's hard, it's diet. Versus if you get one of these green um, green sticks and, and bend it, it's not going to break into two pieces, right? If you will hear that sound and it will be partially broken, right? This is in children because their bone is not dry enough yet or it's not strong enough yet. So there will be bending and partial fracture. As you see here, look, this bone is bending and this bone is having partial fracture, not complete fracture. It's hard. If, if, if it is green stick, if it's not that hard, it's hard to break it into two pieces, right? You're going to bend it and partially break it down. 
green step. That's like what? Uh, not, not the hairline fr uh, fracture. It's it's just a partial fracture. Like one side is fractured, the other one is not. Okay. Uh, coolest fracture is specifically a uh, fracture that's here toward uh, the rest. Okay. Close to the rest. They call it coolest fracture. Like if you're going to fall down and you're falling on outreach hands like this. Okay. If you fall down like this. Okay. This will be broken down. Just one word about each one of those. Uh, Potts fracture. It's a fracture of, of both uh, the tibia and fibula. And what happened um, in fracture is as follows. What happened if your bone is fractured? How does it heal? The first step is, in a fracture, there will be some bleeding. And this bleeding will form something called hematoma. Hemat means blood. Oma means swelling or collection, translation. And uh, in tumors, it means, it means a tumor. But tumor is a swelling, isn't it? Isn't tumor is a swelling? So oma means swelling, and it can be used as tumor. But here it's not tumor. It's just swelling. Swelling, that's blood. Blood swelling. This is the first thing. Blood will fill that area. And then you're going to form something called callus. I will show you the pictures. And then spongy bone will reform. Compact bone will reform. So hematoma. Here is a fracture. So there is a space here. Bleeding. The blood fill this area. Blood clot. And in that blood clot, the bone cells involved in this part only are going to die. And the blood that's filling this will be invaded by fibrous tissues. And then, of course, the bone is weak now, right? So you're going to make something called callus, like a layer of bone outside and inside. How about in between? Still broken, right? Still reforming. But you have this, these calluses inside and outside. Um, that is um, keeping it and, and strengthening it. Okay. So it's called internal and external callus. Look at this. Fracture. What happened here? It's hem hematoma. Here is the hematoma. Started to be invaded uh, by fibrous tissue. And look at this, cartilage will come outside to start the callus. Are we following the steps? Callus is forming inside and outside. And then spongy, uh, spongy bone, osteoblast will come over in this area and it's going to replace the cartilage by bone. What bone? Spongy bone. And then compact bone will form. So here it is, it was cartilage invaded by the osteoblast changing the cartilage into bone look at the callus did you ever have a broken bone before or did you see somebody have a broken bone before it, it's it's actually if like if i have this bone broken if you feel it it will go like this and you see like a little bump okay this is called the callus because the inside is weak so you're adding more layers okay just like the cast but the cast is something from outside this is from inside and what's the fate? There is one outside and one inside. Are we following? Look at this. If this is broken down, you make a callus here from outside, external, and another one internal. Like you're putting two things like this to strengthen this point or this part until the inside heals. And what's the fate? It will be absorbed and disappear, but honestly, not 100%. It usually leaves like a sl slightly elevated part, but no big deal. It's more important uh, to heal. Now, there is a general term when it comes to uh, the health of the bone, and this is called osteopenia. Penia, we know osteo, of course, osteo. Bone, penia, weak, just weak, irrespective of, of the reason. This is just an umbrella for weak bone. Why is it weak? We will talk about it. But weak bone mean osteopenia. 
Is that the only time that we'll be using osteo and penia? Of course not. You will use both of them all the time. You will see it. Once you see penia, it means something weak. You will see it. So osteopenia is weak bone. There are different reasons for osteopenia. One of them is natural. Age. With aging around 30 and 40, you're losing 8% in women, 3% in men per decade. Okay, so if you are a lady uh, around 30 or 40, you're going to start to lose 8%, 8% every 10 years. Okay, uh, men's, uh, they lose about 3%. So obviously, uh, bone will become stro stay stronger in males, and this is due to the effect of testosterone. Testosterone uh, effects on the osteoblast is not uh, the same as estrogen. Okay, estrogen, when it drops, it drops, osteoblast drops. Testosterone, when it drops, osteoblast does not drop that much. Okay, so the bone with osteopenia, osteopenia, it's the name gave it away. Osteopenia means weak bone. So the bone is weak, fragile, can break down easily. Tooth, even the tooth, tooth is bone, right? So what are the types of weakness? Osteoporosis, and I talked about this. And the other one is uh, rickets or osteomalacia, okay? Osteoporosis, the porous bone. This is more in females, but it does happen in males. Less, but, but it does. And this is basically, I mentioned it, osteoporosis. What's osteoporosis? Porous bone. Why the bone is porous? Osteoblast is not fully functional. It's not on the full speed. Why? Because estrogen and testosterone was pushing it to work. When it drops, the level drops, um, it will be less functional and it will uh, gradually decrease the strength of the bone. It will become porous. So it's mainly for the sex hormones. Look at this bone. Look at the spongy bone. Spongy, yes. It contain cavities, yes. But look at the trabeculae. It looks healthy here. Look at these trabeculae. Can you guys see this? See how porous? This is osteoporosis. Um, other things are like uh, cancer, and cancer have an issue with the bone that stimulate osteoclast. Stimulate osteoclast, and this is another issue. Osteoclast is going to be activated. It will take the upper hand. Uh, again, cancer, cancer, cancer produce an a factor that activate osteoclast. So it's going to break it down, and it can form a severe osteoporosis. Okay, so that's it for this chapter.